Oh, we back at Nissan Stadium. Oh, yeah. Wait for the brother beside you, man. Let's have fun. Deontay Foreman. Sack! Lawrence in trouble. Sack! Sack! Lawrence fires across the middle. Ball intercepted on a tip. Picked up. Jayon Brown. He was a robber. Throws deep downfield, and it is intercepted. It's Christian Fulton. Looking. Fires down the middle. Intercepted screen. Shut up! With the head coach of your Tennessee Titans, I'm Mike Keith, welcoming you to the Mike Vrabel Show. Titans are 9-4 and four after Sunday's 20 to nothing win over Jacksonville. The nothing on the second part of it, the big part of the story, a shutout for the defense, hard to do in the NFL. It is hard to do, and uh, a lot of credit goes to the players and, and the coaching staff, and it was a fantastic performance. Everybody that played, I felt like, understood the game plan, played with a great speed and energy, and you know, they tackled really well and they a lot of turnovers, all, all the good stuff that, that goes in with playing great defense. All right, Mike Vrabel's six pack, all defense in this segment of the show. Let's jump right in. First defensive play, how about a little Danico Autry? That's it right there. You know, you, you see the quarterback go and wanting to throw it. Sean Evans did a nice job of going in there and matching that spot route. Danico getting in there, uh, making the inside move, reacting. And, you know, they called him down right there. I thought it had been grounding. Um, but anyways, it goes with the coverage, helping to rush. That's a great way to start there as a first defensive play. All right, good to have Rashawn Evans back in the lineup. Led the Titans with six tackles. Here's his first of the game for lost yardage on James Robinson. Yeah, you hear a little misdirection. You know, you get the, the flasher coming across, and, you know, Rashawn runs through. Harold sets the edge. Really nowhere for him to go. That's what we tell these guys, man. Let's set the edge, build a wall, and if you can run through it, then run through it and go make a tackle. So. That was a huge play there. Two plays later, how about a little more sacking of the quarterback? An avalanche of Titans coming from the inside, including Harold Land. There were all kind of guys coming, and uh, really liked the call here. Love the execution. Uh, could have been a number of guys there, Danico, Jeff, Harold. So it was a, it was a well-called, well-timed uh, pressure. Call that meeting at the quarterback, That's right? it, roll call at the ball. Roll call at the ball. Second quarter. Third and eight situation for the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're on the move a little bit. They try to sneak Carlos Hyde through. Uh, no thank you. Well, third and eight right around plus territory midfield. You don't really expect a run here in the National Football League, but you know they try to slip one in. But there's Jeff knocking his guy back three yards with hands in his chest. Everybody else swarming, and you know that's how you you don't really think about them running the football right there, but. You react to it, you play good defense, and, and Danico sheds there and makes a tackle. Forced to punt. Moving to the third quarter, Jacksonville trying a little bit of a trick. Kevin Byard is not biting. Yeah, a little trickeration here. Chenault back to, to, to Lawrence, and you know, just a just a great job by Kevin in the middle of the field to, to see the entire field, see that a guy was free, come uh, make a legal hit, great contact below the football, didn't hit him in the head or neck. Uh, and was able to dislodge the football and you know just a really nice play you know just keep having a great year for us. Next play how about the first of the takeaways all day Rashawn Evans with a gift. Yeah we'll take it you know he's in the middle there playing a little spy and uh, kind of bounces off there uh, Chenault's hands and you know Rashawn's able to get it we just got to get going in the right direction and uh, see if we can get some return yards. <laughs> got to turn it up more. That's it. He just got to get, get going the in the right field. direction. There you go. He was, he was headed south. We needed to be going north. Second interception of the season for Rashad Evans. When we come back, how about a second six-pack of plays from the Titans defense in the shutout, thus making it a 12-pack? We'll do it when the Mike Vrabel Show continues after this.
It's another six pack of defensive plays from Sunday's shutout win over Jacksonville. It's time to start the run on takeaways. Let's keep an eye on Jayon Brown right here. A little bonus sixer. Here we go. We get a little pressure. Jayon gets blocked, pops out of there. We practiced it all week. Didn't look so great on Wednesday. Started to look better at the end of the week and you know, just well executed. And, you know, that was, you know, another, another well timed call and, and better executed. Good catch. Great catch going back. And, you know, that's where you got to be. And guys are trying to get their hands up. And, you know, Jayon gets out back into the throwing lane. and. You know, it was uh, it was well timed and, and well called and well executed. Speaking of good catches, Christian Fulton on this deep ball. This is the third interception of the ball game. Pass rush gets there and Fulton retreats. Yep, the old hail mary, full grace. You know, quarterback going to his right, just lobbing it up there, and you know, Christian really had to battle that receiver for that ball. So thank goodness. He came down with it. You said it on the post game, though. That was a play the Titans were not making earlier. Those, in the those year. were the ones that, that the Jets hit us on, and uh, that was really cool to see him, you know, be able to stay back there and go make a play on the football. That, those are the ones that uh, that they hit for some big chunks uh, earlier in the year. Let's take a look at another Christian Fulton play here. This is a pass breakup, but really a pretty effort on his part, mirroring the receiver, staying square, uh, not opening it up, not 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 retreating but uh, standing his ground uh, and, and then being able to, to disrupt the route, the, the timing, and obviously stab through the pocket. Uh, Jay on there, you know, trying to recover the ball, loose ball, play to the recovery of the ball, all those things that we talk about. So uh, just a really nice job. It's good to have Christian back and you know, get him playing with some confidence. You have had some kind words for Derek Roberson in the last couple of games with his performance. He had a really nice sack in the ball game for a minus 20. He did, and he had some other good moves. He had a good play on kickoff coverage. You know, he went down there again and see the pocket collapsing. And I'm sure, you know, Jeff was working hard enough that, you know, Jeff had deserved one from yesterday. But sometimes that's how it goes, man. He, you know, Jeff created I think two sacks yesterday, and you know would have certainly loved to get one of those, but. You know, as long as somebody at the Titans uniform is getting getting sacked, we're happy. Robertson has a sack and a half in the last two games for the Titans and has played very well against the run as well. All right, fourth and final takeaway. One of the newer Titans, the veteran from Chattanooga, Buster Screen. Just a just a really cool play here. They got a three-level route breaking in, and you know, Buster starts in the in the slot and, and works his way back, gets some depth, doesn't bite up, and you know, they're trying to hit that in cut in there behind them. And you know, great catch. You know, this was really cool to see. He's done a, you know, just a great job for us, uh, coming in there, playing inside, playing outside. And, you know, he's a great teammate. I, I love coaching him. I know everybody loves having him around. All right. So when you're gonna finish the shutout, it's gonna be done by the backups, and the starters are on the sidelines urging them on. You got to get off the field right here on fourth down. Yep. Yeah, and so we go over there. We, you know, Dane unfortunately misses the tackle. Guys are swarming. You know, Elijah's in there chewing on his ankle and biting his ankle, and then Farley comes in and cleans him up. And, you know, that's, you know these guys are excited. You know what I mean? You see Jeff, you see Rashawn, you see Jayon coming in there, just uh, not letting them get any cheap garbage yards there at the end. That's a 245-pound back right there. Ogun Bawali is a big guy. He is. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, we tackled really well yesterday. That was, uh, there was a lot of good clips of our, our tackling. You know, I think our coaches had our team for one missed tackle. That's that's unbelievable. When a team gets a shutout, it often adds confidence to a defense. It certainly adds excitement as you've gone back to practice this week. Yeah, you know, I think just playing well and playing together, communicating, that's what breeds confidence. You know, I don't want to just sit there and say, hey, we only have confidence when we shut them out because you could play really great defense and, and give up some scores in this league. But it, it's all the things that lead to that, playing with great technique and fundamentals and effort and swarm into the football. Does Mike Vrabel have confidence as we go to the Delta Dental? Can you guess this yeah, type? Yeah, we're on a roll here. We're okay. on a roll. All right. Let's see it. So let's take a look before we go to break. The reveal. Whoa. Can you guess this Titan? Looks like he's off of the show Yellowstone, maybe. Yeah, or the La Alaska, the last frontier. There you go. There it is. We'll see if you can guess who this Titan is and see if Mike Vrabel can guess who this Titan is. Sponsored by Delta Dental, when the Mike Vrabel Show returns after this.
Delta Dental says, can you guess this Titan? What they really want to know is, can head coach Mike Vrabel guess this Titan on the Mike Vrabel show? Let's take another look before we need the head coach's uh, guess. I know. Uh, I think we're sticking with the O-line. That's David Quessenberry. David Quessenberry is the guess, and it is... Jeff, Jeff Swain. Swain. Tight end. It's Jeff Swain. Kind of looks like I, That was Wheeler my second guess. Off of Yellowstone. Kind of does. Jeff Swain, important guy to the offense, has caught a lot of balls in recent weeks. Good blocker. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, he plays a lot of roles for us. He plays on the line of scrimmage. He can play off, plays in the backfield. Um, you know, unfortunately, I know he'd like to have that one, you know, get him, get him a touchdown there the, the other day. But, um, you know, just a lot of dirty work. He knows a lot of positions. He's, he's a smart player. Um, and that's not easy duty, you know, going in there and wrestling with, with sometimes 280-pound defensive ends in this league. So um, Jeff's been a consistent player for us and you know, knows a lot of positions. Kind of represents what you want guys on this team to be, selfless, tough, available, dependable, all of those things. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, he also is making some corrections and some detail and some techniques and, you know, pointed that out to, to the team. and and the coaching staff about something that, that him and I had talked about just on a particular block that I thought could help him. Uh, and it actually showed up in the game and, um, you know, just try to point those things out to the, to the players that taking the details and making corrections and, and fixing. Tight ends very involved in the ball game on Sunday. Yeah, you know, a lot of action and, you know, Ferk had some, some catches and, you know, Pru helps us out in a lot of different ways. And, you know, Swain, we, we only got three of them. So uh, they all have roles and they all play. When we come back, Amy Wells in the Titans files as she goes off the field for a Titans fan favorite who also happens to be a hometown boy made good. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show. When you talk about heroes off the field to Titans fans, you talk about the visor. And I'm not talking about Steve Spurrier. He's great, but our visor is somebody that Titans fans have been relying on for over 20 years. And for the last seven, he's actually worked for the organization. The best part of his story, he's living a dream because he is a Nashville native. In this week's Titans Files, Amy Wells goes off the field to introduce you to the person known as the visor you'll recognize him quickly. We've seen so many players step up and play well with Jeffrey Simmons or Kevin Byard or Harold Landry. When the Titans signed Jim Wyatt to become the senior writer editor for the Tennessee Titans in 2015, it might have been the first big move that Amy Adams Strunk made as a controlling owner. Jim had covered the team since almost the day that the team moved to Nashville, so his credibility was unmatched with the Titans fan base. Jim's presence makes TennesseeTitans.com the first stop for Titans fans every day of the year. A lot of these fans that I've known since I started covering the team, you know, back in 1999. And a lot of times I'll tell people, hey, I remembered when you first started at the Tennessee. And that's been a big part of it. I appreciate people that read. I appreciate people that are passionate about this team because they're, the, they're what kind of makes us go. So I'm trying to give people a look on what happens on the practice field. So practice observations, news of the day, feature stories, try to work ahead. And you know, a lot of days it ends up being three, four things a day you try to crank out. Jim Wyatt's work ethic on behalf of the fans is no joke. He never stops, ever. He writes three or more stories a day. He does interviews with radio shows, podcasts, and TV shows. Jim has a love for his job and a humility that makes him never forget who he works for. I don't consider myself the best writer out there, but I've always been willing to work. You know, I, there, there are a lot of other people in this market who do a great job, and now my job is to try to, to outwork them as much as I can and to try to you know, tell stories about the team and try to pump out as much information about the team as possible. And it all starts with a pencil. Jim Wyatt is famous for the many pencils that he has on him at press conferences and interview sessions. Every picture of Jim shows him with multiple pencils clinging to his ever-present visor. For Jim, it's like when he started school in the 1970s. 
pencils are practical. When you make a mistake, you can erase it easy. A lot of times I keep a file on my notebook of what's going on day to day. Instead of having to start on a whole new page every day, I can use the eraser to update it. I keep it on the visor because you always know where it is. You know, you don't have an ink blemish on your pants, which I used to get from time to time. And I usually have a couple of them because you never know when you're gonna run out of, run out of lead. When we're out in public with Jim Wyatt, Titans fans treat him like a rock star. They love his stories. They love his twice weekly mailbags. They love him on Twitter. And they like the special touches that he gives them each week. Kind of like the now famous Britches Report. In seven seasons with the Titans, Jim's Britches Report has become an instant classic. When I started working with the team, I'd get a heads up on what the uniform combinations were gonna be. It was it was uniform. And I think the first couple of times I said tights were wearing, you know, a blue jersey, white pants. And I think I said blue jersey, white trousers, you know, blue jersey, white britches. I, I went through a, a long list of different descriptions for, for pants and the britches took off. It's funny how uh, People look forward to that. You know, some new fans or fans that are following the team elsewhere, they see britches sometimes and they still, man, who, who uses the word britches? Jim Wyatt uses the word britches along with thousands of other words that he provides for the Titans fans every single week. He works for the Titans fans. Jim's connection to the Titans fan base comes naturally because Jim Wyatt embodies local boy makes good. It means a lot. I grew up in Nashville, went to Father Ryan High School, went to grade school here. I'm one of five, all, all brothers and sisters you know, grew up here in Nashville. And you know, I never dreamed we'd have an NFL team. I covered high school sports when I first started working for the Tennessean. When I got out of college, I loved that. When the news came that the team was coming, I continued to work high schools and got an opportunity to cover you know, the NFL. And it's been a dream you know, career for me, you know, being a Nashvilleian. You know, my dad, 83 years old, has season tickets. He goes to all the games. Got so many friends that are passionate Titans fans. I just have such great pride in this city and such great pride in being able to work for the, for the NFL team in this city, the Tennessee Titans. It's been a dream for me. People always wonder, is Jim Wyatt that good at his job? The answer is yes. People always wonder, is Jim Wyatt that good a guy? The answer is yes. Certainly very proud that he's part of the Titans team and that he makes TennesseeTitans.com so special every single day. When we come back, it's time for the Nissan Keys to Victory. The head coach will be right here next. The coach is back for the Nissan Keys here on the Mike Vrabel Show. Titans on their way to play the Pittsburgh Steelers on Sunday at Heinz Field. Key number one is be the more physical team offensively. Yeah, as you go into uh, Heinz Field, anytime you play the Pittsburgh Steelers, you, your offense better be uh, physical. You, your, your offense better be physical because if they're not, uh, they're going to feast on you. Uh, they're they're going to put their hands in, their in your chest and try to knock you back and shed and be physical tacklers. DBs are, are aggressive, and so we just – you know, our mindset is that we have to be aggressive and physical on uh, on offense. All right, key number two in this Nissan rundown is about the Titans' defense, and that's limit the run RPO game. Yeah, what does that mean? It, well, they're going to call a lot of runs, but they may end up throwing the football off the look that Ben sees and what he's coached to do. So if you're not lined up, and if it, it's it's option football, you know, but it's, it's just a run-pass option, and so... Uh, if you're not lined up and you're not taking care of your responsibility, you know that's where the quarterback's going to pull it and, and he's going to throw it. And so uh, it's critical that we get lined up, we take care of our responsibility. Uh, that, that's where they've been having a lot of success. Something you did well on Sunday, people in the right places. Yeah, I mean, I think that that needs to continue. They just do it a lot more. Uh, they're going to do it a lot, 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 lot more frequency. All right, if you've watched the Mike Vrabel show, you have seen this key before, number three, Penalty-free aggression on special teams. What does that mean? That means we have to play full tilt to the football. We have to finish longer than the guy with the ball, but we can't block guys in the back. We have to have situational awareness enough to know, I'm chasing a guy back into the returner, man. Turn up, get to the second level, let Chet or whoever's returning make a miss, and let's see if we can get a block on a second level. Not grabbing guys at the point of attack and, and getting holding calls that put you inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, change of field position. It's huge. We saw it with the New England. A difference, you know, here the other day is, is just being able to play special teams without penalties. Overall, tough place to play, 
got to have a mindset, just got to go get it. Yeah, yeah, you have to have a mindset, you have to prepare. Uh, you got to take care of the football, you know, and, and hopefully be able to, to force them into some turnovers. And, and like we've always said, you know, your special teams are going to have to make a play or two for you. Good luck on Sunday. Thanks. All right, Titans and the Pittsburgh Steelers coming your way Sunday from Hines Field. Kickoff set for noon. We'll have it for you here locally on 104.5 The Zone. We hope you'll tune in. For the head coach, Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Tighten up.